Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Focus WP, our little webinar we're going to do today. Um, I'm super excited to have my pal Pete here, Pete Everett. You may have heard of a little company called SEO Hive. That is a super um, useful service. It's something that like, mm -hmm. I can't believe somebody hasn't done already, but I mean, he did it, but like, I can't believe there isn't more of that. Like, it's so such a cool setup. We're going to let Pete have a minute to tell us a little bit about what he's done, a little bit about Retain FM and all of that stuff. But first, I just wanted to say hey to all you guys and basically also say like, come on, everybody, come on in. It's, uh, it's, it's just a couple minutes after. I started pretty close to on time today. But you're probably not, nobody's going to show up till seven after, Pete. That's like my usual oh is that the rule is not the rule when 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 i was a kid in uh in college we used to have a four minute rule to our lectures because there was a lecturer that we all hated that was always like six minutes late so we'd turn up at the lecture hall uh, we'd turn up at the lecture hall and we'd kind of uh mark our we, we we had to mark ourselves in that was where they fell down so we marked ourselves yeah, yeah. in and if he wasn't there by four minutes past we were off um Gone. but we already yeah. had our mark yeah Fair, yeah. enough. It's always, Fair enough. It's always an awkward part of a webinar, this, because this is the bit that you never prepare for, uh, but it's the bit yeah. that you all know that's coming, this this random little chit-chat bit at the start. Well, in all honesty, it's my favorite part. I don't know. I like. <laughs> I love awkward. Awkward is like my thing, and this part where we just ramble, I'm always like, what's up? This is the party bit. So uh, what what is a real shit? Like, it's frustrating. I wish I had a better solution because the folks who show up on time are penalized by having to listen to nonsense. But let's give them something good, Pete. Let's tell them, like, uh, okay, so we've got a few people listening already. But tell us a little bit about, um, well, first, give us a little sneak peek about something we're going to learn today. Okay, so today we're talking about how to create recurring services, but starting right where you are now. So not having to completely rework your business to to make this thing happen, but actually saying, you know what, I want to try a recurring service, want to see how it's going to work. This is how you put one together. And not only that, but this is how you make sure that you're profitable with it right from day one. Love it. Okay. And just a reminder, guys, we've got a couple... Um users leaving comments on Facebook. This is the StreamYard situation. If you don't click the little link that's in the original post, um, it, we can't see who you are. And so we can't greet you. I'll jump over into the group once Pete gets going and try and help you guys out. But um, in the meantime, just one one last little bit of business. Pete, tell tell the peoples, tell the little All Focus the WP tribe how you wh who you are, what where you come from. Tell them about your businesses. So, yeah, so my name is Pete Everett. I'm based in Sheffield in the UK, and I run two companies and a podcast. So my my two companies are, I have my own digital agency, an agency called So, and I'm going to be talking to you a bit, bit about that because I use that as some of the examples in what we're going to be talking about later. Like, uh, so, that's what it's like, so, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. Dot, so dot, our, dot. Our, logo, <laughs> our logo is even S-O dot dot dot, and it's great right. when you're doing presentations so. or whatever. So you can just say, so. Yeah. And you, you're always it's on good. brand. It's great. It is. It is um, good. It's a little, you, you'd be surprised how many people use the word focus in normal conversation. I enjoy that as well. It's fine. It is. It's nice. It's handy when that, <laughs> when it works out like that. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to say it was intended because of that, but it's, it's actually because my business partner is called Steve Osborne and uh, uh, this company was born out of something that he used to do. So we carried his branding over. So I'd, I'd like to say that it, we'd, we'd preempted all of that, but, but we didn't. He, his, I suppose his mum did you know, back in the day. Uh, anyway. So his mom named your business, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of. So, um, so his middle name's Nigel. So I'm just pleased he didn't put that because they'd be like, no. No? That'd be very different. Yeah. Snow? Snow. 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 No, yeah. It doesn't anyway, play as well. We, yeah, no, it doesn't. Uh, so, okay. so I do Tell that. Tell everybody what so, SEO Hive does a little bit. I do that. Uh, SEO Hive is my second business, and that is a white label SEO service. So we help digi digital agencies build streams of recurring revenue by doing the grunt work of SEO retainers for them, in a nutshell. It's awesome. It's a really cool service. Um, so if you guys have questions as we go through this talk today, pop them into the chat. Um, I'm going to put Pete's slides up whenever he's ready and then leave him to it.
but I'll be in and out and I'll be monitoring the chat. So if you have uh, anything you'd like to ask him or if you want to tell him like, whoa, 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 say that all again, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll handle communicating those messages into him. So Pete, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go for the takeover. Shall we? Boom. Okay, pal. I will be in the wings. If you need me, just holler. Will do. Cheers, Stephanie. Right. So guys, thanks for your time. She really has left as well. I could say anything right now. That's amazing. Uh, thanks for your time today. We are going to be talking about creating re recurring services. Um, we're going to cover what is a recurring service, looking under the hood of is how to create your own recurring services. I have a recurring services planner. And now I'm just realizing I added a little bit to the end, which is about pricing recurring services, which we're also going to cover, but it's not on this slide. So we've got quite a lot to get through, but it's it's all logical. It's all straightforward. Uh, you, you know, it's, yeah. We'll we'll get through there. So let's ask the dummy question first. What is an agency's recurring service? So on the screen, you'll see I've got a whole host of potential services that that are recurring. However, I would say that all of those on the left hand side aren't really recurring services. If I just get rid of the cross so we can see them all again, you know, yeah, okay, hosting you can charge monthly for that so, and it recurs. Uh, domain names you can charge annually for those and they recur. Transactional email, licenses, care plans. Care plans is the nearest thing to a recurring service on that list. But what I'm really talking about today isn't the low value or lower value services that you may offer. Uh, like hosting, domain names, transactional email, et cetera. What I'm actually talking about is services that will move the needle both for your business and for your client. So that's why I've got the big red cross up here. Now, I'll fully take the point that depending on your care plan structure, the care plans could sit either side of the list. But I don't, my experience of it is care plans are still normally a relatively low, uh, low budget sort of offering, you know, let, let's say less than $150 a month for, for argument's sake. So we're talking about significant recurring revenue rather than just um, uh, sort of smaller recurring bills. So if we look under the hood of a recurring service, a recurring service starts with an input, and that's an input that happens each month. So I've put a few, a few um, uh, starters on here. So that might be a customer order. At SEO Hive, our entire business is based around the recurring orders of customers. You sign up to our service. When that monthly bill comes out, that's when the tasks get created and the, the work gets assigned for that month. You're, you're paying in advance for something. So that's, that's our input. That's the trigger that makes this thing happen. But likewise, you could that trigger could be something like a keyword position. So, uh, you know, we have a process that, um, that boosts keywords, if they drop onto page two, we, we have a process that then flags those to put them into the, the mix so that they go back up onto page one. We do some work to get them up onto page one, for example. Or it could be if you use like some of these design services like Dear Designer or Design Pickle or whoever, you know, their their trigger is, well, the client submits a brief. So actually the, the recurring part isn't linked to your billing. You do get billed each month, but the, the work is triggered from somebody submitting a design request. Or there could be a whole host of those, hence Hence the dot, dot, dot. So once you've got that input, you then have the process. And that's where you actually get to work. Now, if you're doing that in-house, that means that you need some kind of SOPs in place, some kind of who does what, how does it happen, how does it get fed back to the client, how does the work get delivered? And, you know, if that's... Uh, with, with SEO Hive, we do that through ClickUp, through the ClickUp tasks, and we have a whole SOP library in there. If it's Dear Designer or somebody like that, you know, they take the client brief, it gets sent to a, an account manager, that account manager makes sure his design is assigned, et cetera, et cetera. So you need that process. Or you might outsource it. So that might mean that you need to pass information off to your uh, to your outsource partner. That might be a freelancer or a white label service or whoever. But you need, you need that you need to figure out how that mechanism works. So when there's some work to do, how does it get passed to the person that's going to do it? And how does it get done? And then you might have seen this one coming. Uh, the, the next bit is it needs to output. So you need some kind of delivery, whether that is writing content uh, each month, whether that's outreaching for links, whether that's doing designs, whether that's uh, you know web development tasks, whatever. Th th there's a delivery element to it. That needs to be reported to the client and that client ultimately needs to know the value of what it is that you've delivered. So I've put pounds and dollars there. 
I guess if you're doing designs for something that might not be that might be more implied than than tactical with SEO, it's dead easy because you know particularly if it's something like e-commerce, we can we can say so this is what your sales were, or if it's lead generation, we can say this is how many leads were generated this month. So that's they're the bare bones of it, and of course because it's a recurring service, it needs to be able to repeat. You need to be able to go from the output right back to the input and loop through the whole thing again. Now, most people think, great, there's a recurring service, but there is part of the jigsaw that's missing from that slide, which often gets missed, often gets underestimated. And as agency owners, particularly if you're a agency, a solopreneur or a small team of two or three people, this can be a, a bit of a killer for you. And that area is management. We don't really like talking about management. It's the very unsexy side of what we do, but it needs to happen because if it doesn't happen, then we, well, you can get into quite a big mess. Let's not go into that. So through management, you need to consider communication, both internally with your client, the reporting element, how does that get sent back to the, uh, you know, does the client understand the reports? What happens if a report contains bad news, for example? Uh, any form of delegation, particularly if you're managing teams where people might go off on the sick or might have holidays or, you know, a freelancer can't make it in or somebody lets you down. And ultimately, as the business owner, you need to be able to get to an overview of your business. You need to be able to see what's going through your business at any one time and have that kind of proper um, overview of, of what's going on. So it is a really important part. It doesn't need to be arduous. It doesn't need to be long, but it does need to happen. So you mustn't forget that when you're thinking of structuring your services and when you're thinking of um, uh, pricing your services. So structuring a recurring service. Here we go. This is where the, the real meat of it gets into it. So when you're thinking of structuring your recurring service, put yourself in your client's shoes and think, Okay, we've we've got a client. Our service does X. That might be, it could be anything. Our, our service does X. Before a client gets, um, before a client, or we can do any work for a client, what is the information that we need in order to get going? And how are we going to collect that? You could even put in there, how does the sale happen? Is that, is it something that you need to set up in your payment software like Xero or QuickBooks? Or is it something that, uh, actually, you can sell online through a, uh, you know, through a Stripe pay uh, gateway or a WordPress plugin or how are you going to sell it? How are you going to sell it? How are you going to get the information that you need so that you can get started? Then secondly, is there a process that you need to go through when you have that information before you can start getting on with work? So for SEO Hive, you know, we we always do some uh, SEO health audits. We always do some keyword research. We always validate the the choices of services that uh, clients have chosen, that kind of thing. So that's that's something that we put in what we call our onboarding period, our onboarding phase. Um, I've called it startup phase here because point one was onboarding. I want to give it a different name. If you don't have any of that stuff, that's fine. If you're running a design service, then, and you don't actually need anything, you're just waiting for the first brief, you can completely pass uh, point two. You can just skip straight to point three. But, you know, that might, it might not just be key, uh, keywords for SEO, as it says on here. You know, if, you, if you're doing um, PPC ads, maybe you do the copywriting as part of the onboarding phase. Uh, if you're doing marketing funnels, maybe it's writing the emails. If you're doing paid social, maybe it's about designing those ads. Um, it, it could be, again, it could be anything, but really you need to figure that out when you're planning out what your service looks like. And I'm going to help you with that in just a minute. So once you've sold something, somebody's actually on the service and you've processed anything you need to process to actually get on with your job, what is then the monthly process? What's the scope of work for each month? How is that communicated or confirmed by the client? Do you need them to approve tasks? Do is there an approval process for design proofs? How does how does it work? Who does that work each month? And how do they know if there's work for them to do? Because you don't want a service relying on you if you're going to be off on holiday or you're going to be sick or you know if if as the management team of the company it's not really good for you to always be um, for the production side of things to be fully reliant on you. So how can you automate that a little bit? And that's why in SEO Hive, we use ClickUp. It can do all of that for us. 
What does your service do for each client? And are there standard operating procedures to follow? SOPs, we can, um, I've done other content about SOPs, but we, we can talk about those if you've got any queries, just drop them in the chat. Who communicates to the, each client? What if they, if it's a query that's coming from a client or, or who, com, um, who communicates the completion to that client each month? Ideally, if it's a monthly service, you don't want you need to communicate with the client sort of at the start the middle and the end of the service so that they know when you're beginning when it's in process and when you're finishing and if it is a monthly service like with SEO then you you want to make sure that you're not if they've paid for you want to make sure that you're not cramming all of their work into like the last few days that can be a again that can be a real killer and people can start getting itchy feet so just having that communication that says yeah we've got your brief this month this is our this is our list of work this is what we're going to be getting on with and we'll address it in due course and then to say we're part way through it we've we're on track for completing your work this month and then hey job's done we're going to monitor everything for the rest of the month and then we'll be back in touch next month with our new task list that's as easy as it needs to be but it it is important to keep uh, keep that line of communication with your client. And then finally, how do you demonstrate that value to the client? How is that delivered? Be that in reports, whatever. Um, you also need to think about client support. So who who or how can the client contact you out of the normal process if they have a query or a problem? So that that might be that they need to pause payment, or it might be that they they really love what you do and they want to onboard six more, but they they you know uh, they're unsure about how to go about signing up in bulk. It could be anything, but you're you're responsible. Like, this is your job to make sure that they have the mechanisms in place to communicate with you efficiently. All right, this is the last page. I, I hope I'm not boring anybody with this. So the next thing to consider is offboarding a client. Now, I know we don't want to think about clients leaving us, but the reality is recurring services do have a churn rate. Clients won't remain clients forever. Some clients will stay for a lot longer than others. I fully take that. But almost no client will stay forever. And again, it's part of your job to make sure that the, the process for them leaving is just as easy as the process for them starting. So what is your process? How can somebody leave? What are your rights? What are their rights? And then crucially, if somebody is leaving your system, how do you make sure you're not paying for things for clients that have, that have previously left? With it, that's something that we learned the hard way with SEO Hive when we ended up paying for the load of seats on software that we we very quickly twigged were for unpaying clients, but we did lose a month or two's fee on them. So voice of experience talking there. It needs to be professional. It needs to be clean. It needs to be non-emotive, but just having that process in place to say, yep, thanks for your business. Here's how we end things. It's a really, um, a really professional thing to do. And then last but not least, Put a process in place for referrals. What is the process if somebody wants to share your service with their with their counterparts, with their colleagues, with their peer group, whoever? Uh, do you offer uh, do you offer affiliate commission? Do you offer a sign up commission? Do you give them credit off their next monthly fee? What what's you know is there an incentive there? What's the process for that? How do you monitor it? Making sure you don't pay too much commission, all of that kind of stuff. And then lastly, what's your process for collecting case studies and testimonials? Because as you grow this, as your business gets busier because of these services, your own marketing will be the first thing to start dropping off the list. So actually, if you can have a process in place that, let's say, on the third renewal automatically goes to approach your customers to say, hey, you know, you've used our used our service for a quarter now how would you feel about um leaving us a case study or a testimonial you know are you happy with that we've really struggled with this with seo hive because we're a white label service and not everybody wants to admit to the fact that they are outsourcing the work i mean what happens if their client finds it kind of thing so it is something we've struggled with but actually we've found that getting little testimonial snippets where it's nondescript about um about which clients are being worked on it, people are a lot happier to give actually doing full case studies is a harder nut to crack just being honest with you right so steph that's about halfway that's the first section done um when we come to the end i've got a couple of planner documents and one of those is about the uh is a 
oh, what have I called it? What the hell? A recurring service planner, RSP. That's it. Recurring service planner. So that's going to be available the old RSP. You through all of those bits. Yeah. The old RSP. RSP. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so this was awesome. I was thinking about this um, in relation to Focus WP as well. Same issue with like referral. I mean, um, reviews and uh, case studies and stuff because we are yeah, also yeah. white label. One little thing I've used is to give people an option of where they leave it because, for example, some people, their customers just aren't really on Facebook, so it wouldn't be as problematic there. Or maybe they're not on, you know, maybe they're not so worried about a Google review because their customers aren't going to be searching for us, you know, yeah. things like that. So that's Great been idea. a little trick that's helped is just to say, like, you know, leave us a review that, like, our people can see, but your people don't see. So anyway, that was a little, that's a little thing we've used. But yeah, I get a lot of the things you say. This is awesome. It's so like common sense but brilliant you know like all at once like, <laughs> well, why look, is it so hard to like why is it so hard to do this for ourselves in the first place it should just be like oh yeah no kidding this is what you do but but it's like you see it you're like ah why am i not doing this you're dead right and you know what one of the hardest things that agencies face is making change so actually if you can make that change as easy as possible. Look, if, if you're starting with recurring services, don't one Monday morning, for God's sake, or Thursday afternoon, wherever you are, um, don't just scrap all your projects and say, right, we're doing recurring services from now on, because that that's <laughs> just that, that's like a recipe for disaster. Just start with a recurring service and offer it to clients that you know you enjoy working with. And you know, start building it up slowly. And then, then you can start a second recurring service or an option to that first recurring service. You can always add complexity later, but make it as simple and as easy as you possibly can to start getting clients through so that they they start you start demonstrating value, you start getting some testimonials. That makes it easier to sell to other people. And all of a sudden it starts to build up this this momentum. Yeah, totally. Um, another little thing I want to say about the communication bit that you had there. We mm -hmm. have a standing rule at Focus with our um, with the traffic manager and with every, that every open ticket gets an email every day. Just as a, like brilliant. that, just takes a little bit of the thinking away from it because you don't have to think like, oh, should I email? No, if they have an open ticket, you send them an email, even if the email says We're still working on this. You know, like. Just so because the most frustrating thing for someone who is enlisting your services is to be like, wait, are they doing it? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah. You know, if they want to put it on you and just like have it not be on their brain. So if you can keep that little steady string of communication so they know what's going on and, and they can ha deal with their client accordingly, then pff, it makes people happy. Yeah. Uh, dead right dead fully fully agree fully agree so yeah I, I hope i hope everybody that's watching has has uh got something out of that and hopefully he's maybe a little less intimidated by the idea of starting a recurring service uh in their business because it, it doesn't need to be a big uh, you know a big difficult thing it could be something really small really simple um but it starts to bring that recurring revenue into your business which is so key yeah. for riding out things Those like you... sessions yeah, for sure. Those of you in the chat, uh, those of you watching live right now, um, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about possibly adding on as a recurring service? Has anything come to your mind that you could potentially offer someone that you could do in a repeatable way? Drop it in the comments if, if you're thinking of something and maybe we can have a little chat about it. Um, and then, Pete, what's happening? What are we doing next? Where to? Right. So, okay, right. I'll I'll go through the pricing stuff, and then we'll get on to to anybody's uh, examples and stuff that they're putting in the chat. All right, cool. Right, right I'll leave you cool, to cool. Thanks, Steph. Right here we go. Right, normally when you're pricing stuff, particularly if you're an agency that's largely used to using project based pricing, you normally most people fall to price their um, recurring services either on a time based and hourly rate or on a deliverable but deliverable based, i.e. a table rate. So, but they're not the only two ways of pricing recurring services because you could do uh, a mix, you know, you, well, here's some more options, either value-based, uh, performance-based, fixed fee. So fixed fee would be something like the design pickle or the dear design model. Um, you could use a custom, a, a custom uh, form of pricing. So where you actually price each client to its own 
it, its own kind of level. Uh, or I've put spread the cost in there. And by spread the cost, I mean like doing websites as a service type thing, you know, a, a payment plan where you include the website and the care plan and whatever for 24 monthly payments. Now, that's not really a recurring service in many respects. That's a, that's a payment plan for a website plus a care plan. Uh, but I didn't want you guys watching it to think that I'd forgotten about it. So, I, I yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Now, each of these have their pros and cons. Some of them are, uh, you know, a time-based model is, is great. You know exactly how much you're going to cost things out straight away. However, what happens if you run out of time to do the, all the work for a client each month? Is the client, is somebody approaching the client to ask for more time? Do things get bumped? Who communications? Are, how do you word your proposals to allow for fluctuations in time, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, deliverable based again, you know, what if those deliverables, so that might be four blog articles each month. What if those deliverables are based on a client approval? So actually the, the deliverable that you work to might not be four blogs a month to get live, but it might be four drafts of blogs to get to the client. And then if they hold things up, you've still delivered your side of things. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but there are pros and cons to each of them uh you know one of the one of the big pros to a fixed fee service like uh, dear designer for example is you know it's a it's a single monthly payment and it's unlimited service as to sign up design agencies it's brilliant however the downside is you know they charge uh was well, 550 pounds so i don't know what that is in dollars uh, about 650 dollars i guess um each month well you know, I could hit them with a new design task every day of the month, including the weekends. So they could be massively out of pocket just from the work that I send them. So if you're starting with this, you might need to you might need to think about that because that fixed fee needs to, you know, you might need to put something like a fair usage policy in place or a total number of tickets each month or whatever it might be. So you do need to think these things through a little bit. Right. However you decide to price. And this is the bit that becomes really important. I'm going to start talking to you about some maths or math if you're American. Um, I'm I work my head works this way, so I find this stuff quite simple. But if you've got any queries at all, I know math isn't some people's strongest suit. That's not not criticism of anybody. It's just we all have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, put pop a comment in the chat, and I'll try and explain them as uh, at the end as best I can. So to calculate your base price, the first thing you need to do is figure out what all your costs are. So when you've got your process down and you know who's delivering what, then make a list of the costs that are involved in that. So that could be suppliers, it could be staff, it could be software. Do you have any work to do on the account each month? You don't forget yourself. Um, you, if anything, are the most valuable asset in your company after the time that you have available. So don't forget your own time. Uh, you, anything else you, you, by this point, you will have the list in the planner document that I'll, I'll get to at the end that, so it should be quite a straightforward thing to, to figure out what your costs are to deliver each month. You might end up with lots of variations of your base price, uh, based on variants of your service as well. I'll, I'll just throw that one into the ring. Right. Then I want you to add in your profit. So I don't want you just to wash your face with this thing. This thing has to earn your company money. So what is the minimum amount of profit you want to make per client? Now, that could be a fixed a fixed amount. Like you might say, right, well, I want to earn $500 a month off every client. So here's my costs. And then I'm going to add $500. Or it could be a percentage. So in my agency, we run, at, we run everything at 50% profit margin. Um, so whatever my costs are, they become 50% of the price. So I need to add the same again to make another 50% the profit. So I end up with costs and profit being equal, hence they're 50% of the whole thing, if you see what I mean. And then you need to think about your taxes. So when you have your costs and you baked your profit in, then you put your taxes on the top. So in the UK, we charge VAT. In America, you might charge sales tax, depending on where which banding you sit in. Um, you'll need to figure out an allowance for corporation tax. and if you follow Mike Michalowicz's profit first model, which I do, which is why I've baked profit into this already, then he would also say that the company should be responsible for the, its owner's personal taxes. So I also put an, an allowance in for my personal tax, which the company pays on my behalf. So 
that when you've then got all of those three things together, that then becomes your base price. So I that means that you cannot sell this for any lower than what that number is. Okay. So let's let's put this into a real world example. So uh, so I've said it again, Stephanie. Uh, so here is. I'm going to run you through one of the base prices that I use in my agency today, right now, for a four article a month SEO agreement. Okay. So the first thing is my costs, right? We use, uh, we have, uh, well, two freelancers that are employed, uh, two freelancers, two copywriters that are employed in our agency. And we have a book of freelancers that we can supplement. So I know what the, maximum rate is I would need to pay for each article. We have a, those agreements in place. So I know how much that is. So I have a table rate for that service, X amount per article, okay? Or per hour or whatever you want. Because what we then have SEO software, we, we pay a lot of money to SEM Rush each month, but it's baked into our business. We couldn't live without it. So I put a contribution for that software from every client into um, my costs. Now, I don't want those costs to go up and down each month. So I use a fixed contribution. I'll, I'll give you what the numbers are in a minute. I give a fixed contribution to each uh, for each client, which means I'll probably end up making a little bit of money on it at the end of the month. But actually, it, it's, it's not really there for that. It's just there to cover the cost. And I then have my management time, which which we say on four articles, we're going to allow two hours of management. So that's normally an hour's worth of call, plus then another couple of check-ins or emails or whatever throughout throughout the month. So it's kind of like a one hour block, plus then the other hours split as 50 minutes here, here 20 minutes there, however it is throughout the month. So that's, that's my costs for writing these four articles. I then need to add my profit in. So I'm saying in, in my agency, as I said, my profit is the same as my cost. I double the costs, of, you know, I it, it, they equal each other to make it a 50-50 ratio. So that's that easy for me. Whatever my costs are, that's what my profit is. And then for, for my agency, now I hasten to add these numbers, are particularly when it comes to taxes, I am not a tax planner. I'm not a financial advisor. Please go and um, seek your own advice in your appropriate country or state. This is not, do not take what, I, what I'm writing down here as gospel and go to an attorney and say, yeah, but Pete said it because I'll, I'll be backing out of that. You know, you won't, you won't see me for the dust. Um, but this is how I do it. So I'm on a fixed rate of VAT because of the, the categorization of my company here in the UK. I'm on a fixed rate of VAT. So that's always 12%. My corporation tax over the years I've been in business, although I get charged 24%, uh, it's 24% on profit alone. So I know that with the allowances and spending, etc., I can add 15%. And it, my corporation tax is normally between 10 and 13% of my overall revenue. So 15% gives me a little bit of uh, a little bit of grace when it comes to that. And then as I said, I add 3% for my personal tax because the company pays my personal taxes. And that's that's the way my company set up to work. So that in total, 12 plus 15 plus three equals 30%. So whatever I have for the profit and the costs combined, I need to add another 30% for taxes. And that equals my base rate. So to make this, so, so this is how it actually works. These are the real figures. I'm not I know it says content example. It, it's more because it's an example of one version of our, our SEO pathway, uh, our SEO product that we sell. So four articles a month will cost me, as the agency, £225 um, to get those four articles written. That's if one of our freelancers that's on a slightly higher rate than, than our paid employees has to write all four. That is the maximum I would be charged for that. As I said, I, ask, I charge every client a contribution for software. So that is um, £75 each month for the software. I charge that to everybody. That's non-negotiable. It just gets, uh, it's not itemized on the bill. They just get a bill for, for the standard fee. But they, in my maths, it's a standard fee across everybody. And then, as I say, we have two hours management. And again, uh, at £25 an hour, that would, that's £50 for, for the management of, of that client. So my costs for each article, uh, for each block of four articles each month are £350. As I said, I'm working on a 50-50 profit 
ratio. So my profit needs to equal my costs. So because of that, my profit, I will then add on another £350. And that's my money. That's that's the agency making money, okay? And then, then that gives me a total of £700. And then I need to calculate my taxes on top of that. So I take the 700 the cost plus the profit, and I times that by 0 0.3, which gives me the taxes at £210. So that means my base price for a four-article SEO retainer for any client, the minimum I can charge it out at is £910 per month. That is the base rate. I cannot go beneath that. Otherwise, the, well, the first person that starts losing out is me because aren't going to change. So that's my profit being squeezed. And if I go too low that my profit gets squeezed, then the taxes that I have to pay will wipe out the rest of that profit and eventually start costing me money. So that's why it's so important to understand this. Now, just because this calculates out at £910 a month doesn't mean that that's exactly what I have to charge the client. What it means is that's what I, that's the lowest I can charge the client. So it it might be that you want to work on more of a custom model side of things where if you are working with bigger clients that have bigger budgets of, you know, maybe 50 plus thousand uh, dollars a year in terms of their marketing spend, you might want to charge a bit more than this because they have the budget for it. And ultimately, your work is going to add more percentage wise terms to their bottom line. So you could be undervaluing yourself even by charging your base price. But this is, it's just so important that you get this so that you don't lose money. These products and services are there to um, serve you as a business and serve you as a business owner. So you need to make sure that the, the money stacks up. Now, you don't have to agree with my maths. This is the way I've decided to do it. You might say, I don't want to make 50%. I just want to make a fixed fee. I might want to make $200 on it, in which case that doesn't become uh, an equal number. That's my decision. That's how I'm running my business. Likewise, that's then going to have a, a knock-on effect to your taxes. You might say that you don't want the company to pay your personal tax. That's perfectly fine. That's entirely up to you. So you can remove that element from it. My job here is to make you think through all this so you don't put all this work in and then end up losing money because that is just soul destroying for everyone involved. So I want to know what your first service will be. And in order to help you put that first service together, I have two planners for you. And they're both available in one kind of pack, if you like. So I have the recurring service planner, which will take you through all of those steps that we talked about before. Where I had six items. There's actually five on the sheet. I grouped two of them together so they all fit. But it will walk you through all of those steps to um, uh, to, to figure out how, you know, how do you onboard somebody? How do you, is there an onboarding process or a startup phase? How does the monthly process work? How do they leave? And how do they get support? They're the, they're the main parts of that. And I then also have the base price calculator, which will talk you through all of this. You just go and fill in the boxes and it will do the maths for you. Okay. They are both available at peteverett.com forward slash RSP. Um, if you've been going through this and you're you are thinking of running SEO, we also have a I ran a webinar a while ago about why SEO discovery discovery sessions should never be free. So they're available. That's available at peteverett.com forward slash discovery. It's actually an SEO Hive webinar, so that will forward you over to SEO Hive. But I just wanted to keep it on uh, peteverett.com just so that you uh, just so you had it handy. And then the final thing, if you really are looking for some more support, is I run a coaching group called the Recurring Agency Program. And uh, at the moment, the doors for that are shut, but they're opening again in September. So if you'd like to be considered, uh, or if you'd like to consider being supported in a coaching group, help developing streams of recurring revenue in your business, then you can join the waitlist at peteverett.com forward slash wrap. So the URLs are oh. peteverett.com forward slash wrap, peteverett.com forward slash RSP, and peteverett.com forward slash discovery. They're all on that slide. I, can I sign up for the one where you teach people how to wrap? <laughs> I am so, I am so street. Can you, can't can you, you imagine the two of us? Oh, oh yeah. Dropping you some know, beats, I, Pat, I'm, on the I'm ones a, and the twos. I mean, Pete. I'm, I'm, I make Eminem look like he's kind of from some like 
pop artist. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, I'm take a drink. Yeah, you need one. You've been flying through all this. And I know that people do freak out about math, but I love it. And I think, truthfully, like, man, what a gift Pete just gave us, you guys. Because how cool is it when somebody just pulls back the curtain and shows us some numbers, you know? Like, everybody wants to see it because we're all insecure about the numbers that we're charging and what we're doing. Yeah. So that was really, that was amazing, Pete. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, I think it it's... It's just eye-opening. A lot of folks might feel, you know, a little hesitant to say like, oh, I'm going to double what it costs me. But it's a totally reasonable thing to do. And also, you know, like he said, it doesn't have to be what you do. Um, no. Somebody in the comments said like that would be a tough sell for them, for their particular clients at that price point for what they're getting. But so you don't have to sell it at that model. You know, like you do what works for you and for your clients. Yeah. And, and sell it at a value-based um, number. So absolutely, anyway, absolutely. Really awesome. You know, you know, if you were so, so we we do we basically work on four articles a month. So obviously, essentially, in that package, people are getting one piece of content a week. That's the idea. But mm -hmm. do one a fortnight, or do three a month, one every ten days. You know, you you could always reduce the number of things that you're delivering, which will then in turn reduce the price right the way across the board as well. So don't. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just yeah. This is a do as I say, not necessarily as I do type moment. That's all I'm saying. And also, if you're writing, um, you know, random articles is one thing, but you guys are specifically like SEO driven with these articles, using their keywords, getting them traffic, getting them found in search engines and all of that stuff. So that's, that's, an, that's a specialized service as well. Uh, yeah. And I don't think that those numbers, I mean, 220 bucks or something for a blog post, uh, you know, of any kind of decent length and performance is not outrageous. So um, anyway, thanks for sharing all of that. Tell me a little bit more. Okay. So there's the, there's the discovery thing, which is where you talk about not having free discovery, which I am all about. I did not know you had that though. So I'll be checking that out. <laughs> and then um, the RSP is where we can download those little freebies, right? Yeah. So, so, so the, the RSP Worksheet. is, is these two worksheets that that I've done them as PDFs just so that you can have them on your machine. You can print them out, and I'm, I'm holding this pencil. I don't know why I'm holding this pencil, but I when I'm planning something because out, we're going to print it, these things out and write yeah, on them. Yeah, I, I find it far easier to, to 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 scribble on stuff. So, or whether that's you know you download it and you copy it onto your whiteboard and do it that way. Whatever works best for you. You, you can obviously open them up in preview or whatever works on a windows machine and, and just type onto them as well if you want that's entirely up to you on your uh, ipad with your pencil yeah damn right damn right. i've not got mine with me actually but yeah great great idea so they're both pdfs they, as i say they come together so you don't have to sign you know I'll, I'll just send you them both when you go to that that page it'll ask you to just pop your name and email address in and i'll email both of them to you um and you know hope hopefully they're they're helpful to you love it that's super helpful and then your course or your, it's not a course, it's a program. Explain a little bit more about how this works. Right. So the, the recurring agency program is a group coaching program that I'm, I have for, uh, and the, the, the purpose of the program is to develop a toolkit. So both of the resources that I've shared with you here, I developed with the current cohort for the recurring agency program. And it's, it's essentially a, it's a group coaching program. We meet twice a month on Zoom. We uh, we have a Slack channel and community where we can support each other. And basically, it's a whole group of people that are either wanting to start recurring services in their business or improve the recurring services they have in their business. I mapped out an entire roadmap, and uh, it's got something like 61 different points on it. So we're going to be creating a tool or a process for every point on the map. But of course, that's going to take some time. And the, the recurring agency program is basically the forum by which those things get developed. What do you mean by a point? You got 62 points. Is it like this is where this point is where we develop an SOP for something? And then this point is where we talk like or what do you how, how do the points? 
Uh, right, so it's uh, by point. So I've actually it's I've actually had it worked up as artwork. So it is a road, and along each road there's like a, a stop, if you like, and each stop yeah. has uh, a different uh, looks at a different part of running your business with recurring services. So there's a point about marketing. There's a point about creating your services. There's a point about sales. There's a point about scalability. And then within within each of those those sort of uh, waypoints on the roadmap, there's then there's then a varying number of sections. It's broken down into a varying number of steps. So we're going to be creating, if you add them all together from start to finish, there's, uh, I think, 61 or 62 of them from memory. So we're going to be creating resources. Some of them will, will be theoretical and more videos and guidance. Others of them will be actual tools, like the, the two worksheets, the two planners. Um, that you can use and uh yeah you you can go from start to finish it is a work in progress i'll be honest uh you know we're we're going through and working through these things um uh with uh, with the agency group uh, with the coaching group but it's uh you know at the minute we we launched it we've we're in our first iteration at the moment with a with a good group um and my focus is isn't to constantly sell it it's to um you know get some agencies in there we work together, we start to understand each other, we start to create some relationships, and then then we'll add in another cohort, which, uh, as this says, the doors reopen on September the 1st. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll open the doors for a couple of weeks, and then it'll close down again, and there'll be another cohort that'll come in probably just before Christmas. It'll, it'll either be Christmas or the New Year. I haven't decided on that one yet. Um, yeah, so yeah it's, that's, 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 it's, uh, that's actually quicker than I expected because it's, I mean... Just to run some quick maths. It's not, it's just math once, Pete. Come on. Math. <laughs> what? No, it's maths. It's mathematics. M A T H S is just awkward to say anyway. Maths. <laughs> You see, this is one of those uh, things that we're going to have to uh, agree to disagree on. Although we both agree yeah. that the Scottish say Earl Grey very and uh, make very hard work of it. Earl Grey. Yeah, there you go. See? That's I'm not my even favorite gonna thing I learned. It. In Scotland, <laughs> I think you can agree I nailed it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I was, I, I could see the tartan. I mean, you've already got the red hair. You just need the tartan hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't even remember what question I was asking. This is so ridiculous. Also, when I met Pete, I was somehow surprised that he had a British accent. For some reason, he looks American. I don't know if American is the right word. I just expected you to not be British. I don't know. I, I look American. I'm not going to. I'm American. Too many people. American. 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 There's a, it's, it's, there's you a lot you of... drop the A, don't you? And you just have an apostrophe. In fact, it should, be the, it should be the US apostrophe. It should. <laughs> yes. Us. <laughs> so this is awesome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. Guys, if, uh, if he gave us all of this for free in this webinar and just like a little over half an hour, can you imagine what's in his agency program so anyway thanks pete so much uh pete no everett.com i believe you've said your website and your name about a thousand times we should have had a drinking game for that because it's every time he says pete everett.com take a shot on the replay guys i mean it's, it's a bit early for that for me and it's only 10 to 5 in the evening but you're you're, you're in the u.s so i'm guessing it's like coming up to noon for you yeah mm -hmm. but, so, but you know what i always say is you you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning this is this is true, or or it's it's wine o'clock somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, thanks oh, so much been fun. for coming. Um, if anybody else has any questions, I assume Pete Everett dot com is where they get a hold of you, or you are Indeed. in the Focus on Your Biz Facebook group. So if anybody wants to message you there, thanks bunches. I will see you around the groups. See you later.